Hi, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm here today to introduce you to the iTrek 9 Ultralight. We're gonna do a quick run through the product and show you how to get on and off the water as efficiently as possible. Your boat's gonna come with this beautiful bag. It's got ripstop nylon in gray, which merchandises with the seat. It also has a nice carrying handle here and on each side. It's got a hard back, so the boat fits inside there with all the parts. It also has a telescopic handle and two nice rolling wheels for easy transportation. So the first thing you do when you're unpacking your boat is you get it on its back, you unsitch the clips on the side, which makes it more compact. You unzip the zippers all the way around. It has the seat tucked right in the top. In the back of the seat, it has the rudder, the boats inside. Inside here, you have the GT drive nestled up in the corner. You have your three-piece paddle. You got your pump and your hose. You also have the electric pump for easy inflation. You got your cup holder. You have your GT drive, we talked about that. And then you have your repair kit. Also in the bag are two extension to the pump handle. The first thing I do is get ready to inflate the boat. So I get the pump ready to go. I insert the handles into the side so my hands fit on there nicely. Tighten them down, both sides. You also notice on the pump, you have a nice gauge so you can see how high you're inflating the boat. You also have the inflation outtake, and this is for deflating the boat. Also, the pump has two settings, single action when it suits left and double action. So what that means is single action, it's only pumping on the way down. Double action means it's pumping up and down. You use that method when the boat is not too highly inflated. And then when it gets to a PSI of about five to six, you switch to single so you can get it up to 10 PSI. So we're gonna get ready to inflate our boat. The pump that you'll receive comes in a box and inside the box, there are two adapters that go to the intake and the outtake. Let's pull the, boat, the pump out. One adapter goes on this end. That's the inflation side. Then this other adapter goes on here. Adapter on top of that, that's for the deflation side. We're just gonna plug it into a 12 volt outlet in your car, and then we'll connect it to the boat. The boat will come strapped, really compact. So we take the strap off and then we start roll, unfolding the boat. Unfold all the way to the front, the two sides. Okay, so with the valve on the boat, to have the um, inflation with your electric pump, you push the valve down and go quarter turn to the right. That opens up the valve. To close the valve, you go to your left and it pops up. That holds the air inside the boat. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and inflate the boat with the electric Pump, turn it on, and let it do its thing. Once you start to hear the electric pump whining, that means it's at its max capacity for inflation. So you're quickly gonna remove the, turn the pump off, you're gonna remove it. And as soon as you remove it, you need to close the valve. So you're gonna turn to your left and pop up. So one, two, three, boom, popped up. That's as much as it's gonna do with the electric. And then we'll switch to our manual pump. So we connect the hose to the outtake and we connect the ho hose to the boat in the valve. We make sure we're on double action, which is on this side, because double action is a lot of air when there's not a lot of pressure in the boat. So 
So I'm at about eight PSI. That's the point I'm gonna switch over to single action where I'm only pushing air downward. So ideally I'm gonna get it to 10 PSI. And I'm watching the gauge the whole time so I can judge how much air is in there so I don't over inflate the boat. Okay, so now I'm at 10 PSI. So I'm gonna remove the hose. Boat's inflated and ready to start assembling. That whole process took four minutes. Now I'm gonna show you what comes with the iTrek Ultralight. Of course, you have the boat hull, you have the rudder, repair kit, seat, cup holder, you got the drive. The drive's gonna come disassembled. I'm gonna show you in a moment how to assemble the drive. It's very simple. You have your three-piece SUP paddle, you got your electric pump, you have your Super F manual pump, and then you also have your owner's manual. Inside your owner's manual come with an Allen wrench. That's to tighten down your cranks. So here's your drive unassembled. Just a couple of things while I have it right here is you got the kick up fins, which is key for when you, hit, if you happen to hit a rock in shallow waters, you're not gonna bend your mass. Super innovative. As soon as you start kicking, the fin engages going forward again. Another thing to note, the front of the drive always has the pulley forward. So now we're gonna install the cranks. The first thing to do is remove the bolt and you get the crank, pedal faces out, face, facing forward. This is the right-hand side. Get it to fit in the slot, then push the button down and slide it into place. Then you align the hole, the bolt goes through like that. You got your Allen wrench to finish the assembly. Crank goes down. And you wanna make sure you don't crank this down too much. It just needs to be snug. If you go too much, it's not gonna have easy motion for easy adjustment. Now that your cranks are assembled, your Mirage Drive is ready to roll. Next, I'm gonna show you how the seat goes on the boat. The first thing we do is grab the strap, put the seat up, and clip the clip into this nylon buckle. Clip it shut, that side's done. Do the same to the other side. This keeps your seat from falling backwards, so then that's set, then you kick the front legs forward, put it in place, move those out of the way so you're clear space and your seat goes right inside and just clips really solidly inside the seat holder. Put the bungee around the back side and the last thing we do to the seat is we have a clip here that adjusts to the D-ring forward. So we clip that in place loosen up the strap a little bit, clip it in place, and then we tighten it down. And your seat is securely fastened to the boat. So much so, you can pick the whole boat up with the seat. Next, I'm gonna show you how to put the rudder onto the boat. The first thing I do is I attach the rudder onto the rudder gudgeon. There's this little slot right here, it fits right down in this slot, and you have a pin. What you wanna do is push it down until you hear the pin engage. Pull, boom, it's engaged, it's attached. The next thing I'm gonna do is attach the handle. I'm a, I like steering with my left hand. You can also clip it to the right side of the seat. What we do is we slide it from the back forward. Boom, engage, you feel the, the pin engaged in the handle. It's not going anywhere. We can put the cup holder on the other side. I just push that button down, boom, clicks into place. Neat feature in the seat is we've included an extra rudder pin just in case the rudder pin in the back broke, you would have an extra on board. So you could do a quick, easy fix. It's a, a manual thing that you could do by hand in a minute. To talk about the seat a little bit, it's got this nano mesh fabric that drains really easily. 
It keeps you nice and dry. It's got the same ripstop nylon that we have on our bag. Um, it's just a really comfortable ergonomic chair. Next, you're gonna do your up, down for your rudder. You clip it into this pad eye, and it's a simple tug upward, pull straight up, rudder goes down, pull straight up again, the rudder comes up. Just the basics of it, it has this bungee cord. As soon as it gets over center, right about here, it pulls itself down. Same way going, deploying the rudder. It gets to a certain point over center and boom, it pulls it back in. So it's a real basic motion to get it to go up and down. I'm gonna get in the boat right now and I'm gonna show you the, the motion. I recommend that you have the rudder straight in the straight position. It's more difficult to get the rudder to go up and down if it's turned all the way on its side. It kind of fights itself. So rudder straight, grab a hold of the plastic and it's a simple straight pull up and let go. Pull up, let go. Straight up pull. It's not to the side, it's not this way, it's straight up. The next thing I'm gonna do is assemble the three-piece SUP paddle. The first thing I do is attach the bottom to the paddle, push the button, clicks into place. Then I have the top part, fits in, put the handle out. So here you have your height measurements. You find your height, you adjust the paddle to your height, you clamp shut the clamp that keeps it in place. A rule of thumb is you want the paddle to go to the upper edge of your wrist. That's a good paddling height. Um, also in paddling, you wanna have the kick of the blade going outward. This allows you to have more reach when you're SUP paddling. Just a general rule of thumb, our graphics on our SUP paddles always face forward. It is a really nice stand-up paddle board as well as a great boat. You put the rudder down, that acts as your fin. Then you put the, keep the cassette well in so you're not getting water splashing through and you can paddle it just like any other stand-up paddle board. Next, I'm gonna show you how to install the GT Mirage Drive with kick-up fins. First thing you do is remove the cassette, then pulley facing forward. You wanna push it down until you hear the click. The click actually locks the drive in place like so. So these tabs wanna face forward towards the front of the boat. When you wanna remove it, push the tab backwards, pull up, and your Mirage Drive is out of your boat. Once your Mirage Drive is properly installed, you can go ahead and adjust for your length. You want your legs to be a little bit bent at its full length. You wanna have a little slight bend to your knee. You don't wanna have it stretched out all the way. You put together this high performance steering rudder and the Mirage Drive, you have a boat that performs like none other. A couple features of the boat that are sitting here, you got a handle in the tail, we have a nice bungee in the back where you could hold a cooler or your gear for when you're out on the water, but it's also a great place for an H-crate. You can clip the H-crate right down to these D-rings. You can put a rod holder on it to go fishing. It's a very convenient place to stash your gear. One of the neat features about this chair is that when you remove it from the boat, it acts as a great beach chair, really comfortable. Next, you're gonna notice this real comfortable EVA pad that's underneath the chair and also in the standing area where you could stand up on the boat. The boat is super stable at 37 wide and six inches thick. The performance is unparalleled. It's fast, it's nimble. The boat is made out of a single chamber drop stitch material that is on a diagonal. There's 18 threads per square inch. That's how we can inflate it to 10 PSI without worry. Next, we go up front. You got a nice handle up front for easy carrying. This boat is really good looking boat. It's got pop color in the tail. It's got this cool gray up front. It just really is a great boat. One of the concepts behind making an iTrek 9 Ultralight was we wanted to make this lightweight, compact boat where we can take the Mirage Drive where it's never been before. We've had this thing in the high Sierras at 10,000 foot lakes up there fishing where you normally can't even get a boat. It's just unbelievable to get it that high up in the altitude, up in these lakes that really have not really seen boats. So people see you on the trail and you're out on the water, they're kind of like dumbfounded because it's not a normal sight to see a, a lightweight, ultralight Mirage Drive product in a glacial lake in the Sierras. 
I hope this video has been helpful for getting you on the water as fast and efficiently as possible. Also, if you have further questions, you can go to hobie.com. We have product support pages there that you could look at to get further detailed information. You also have a whole lot of information inside your owner's packet. Now I'm gonna show you how to deflate the boat and put all the components back into the bag. The first thing we start with is deflation. You go back to the tail of the boat, take the top off, twist to your right. You let the air escape on its own until it stops coming out. The next thing I do is after the air has escaped under its own power, I'm gonna attach the electric pump on the deflation side. Turn it, turn it on, let it do its thing. What you do is after the pump starts whining, just like the inflation, we turn the pump off, we untwist it, remove it, and then we also lock the key by turning it a quarter turn to the left. This locks it so no more air is going in or out of the boat. So now that you have all the air sucked out of it, it makes it a lot easier to fold. So the first thing we do is we fold a nice fold over the top of the well, straighten out any creases we have there, and you go all the way to the tail with it, then we do the same thing on this side, go over, the better we do the folding and the prep, the easier it's gonna be to get everything back in the bag. So I start at the tail, I make a fold, it's about a foot, a little over a foot, keeping it nice and tight, all the arm, don't let any of the corners pop out. Go up over it, keep this all tucked in tight, right over the top. <clears throat> Next thing I do is I grab the strap. I like to go around the sides of the boat, strap around it. So I'm gonna tighten this thing down nice and tight. And there's your boat folded up, ready to go in the bag. We want to put some of the other components in the, in the bag first. The first, we want to think about the Mirage Drive. What I do with the Mirage Drive is I kick the fins down, I put the main part of the drive up here in the corner, and I put the pedals all the way back in the corner. That way, when I fit the boat in there, I'll have some extra space. The next thing I do is I break down the three-piece paddle. Take the top off, Take the blade off the shaft. What I like to do is upside down, put this blade in there, get it as close to the bottom as you possibly can, along with the other shafts, kind of all sit next to each other. And then next, we're gonna take off our handle parts. And with the handle parts, it's kind of a good idea. So they're not just floating around in the bag. You can put them in the back of the seat. Nice place to keep them. Take the hose off. So I like to break down your feet and have this pump sit right up here, nice and flat, just like that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna coil up the rudder. We're gonna coil it up and we're gonna put it back in the seat. It's a nice spot for it. Keeps it all nice and neat and flat. Key to putting your boat away is keeping it flat. So then now we're gonna prepare the seat to be put back in the bag. We take clips off each side. Take the clips off each side. And then how you want the boat, you wanna lay this part flat and then 
the feet kick in. So I'll set that aside. I'm gonna grab my electric pump, coil up the cord so it's not flopping around. So I'm getting ready to put the boat inside. So the boat's gonna sit Once you get the boat in, loosen up your straps. Get this guy to clip. And the last thing we have to do is put the seat inside the bag. You notice the seat has a curve to it and the curve matches nicely with the boat. So what I recommend, first stick these straps inside here. The handles, the handles go towards the bottom of the bag. That's your handle mount for your steering. Everything's inside and I'm gonna tuck this last part in here. Get it nice and snug. Get it all ready for to start zipping. And I put the hose, there's a nice little space underneath here for the hose. And I pull the flap back over and I zip down to the center. Zip down to the center. Last thing I like to do is get a little snug, tighten these guys down all four sides and you're good to go. All packed up and ready to go at 50 pounds.